What was that, Abby? So lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about hay and about how I'm gonna feed my cattle this year and about ways to save money in feeding my cattle this year and how to use trees to do it all. And so in today's video, we're gonna talk about that. Now, a lot of people are gonna try to tell you that you can save a whole heck of a lot of money by feeding your cattle tree hay this winter. And given the fact that hay prices are gonna be skyrocketing because of a very weird wet summer that we've had here, a number of folks have asked me if I plan on using tree hay to feed my Scottish Highland cattle. And while for centuries, humans have been using tree leaves and branches to feed ruminants like cattle and sheep. And if there's anything I don't have a shortage on this farm, it's definitely trees, whether it be the tree crops that we have here, like black locust and mulberry, or the thousands of trees just growing wild here on our farm. I'm gonna tell you right now that using tree hay is not the right choice for me and my cattle, and let me explain why. Hey, Belinda Carlisle, looks like you girls wanna to move to some fresh pasture and get some more grass, huh? Abby, don't annoy Belinda. You know, the practice of using tree hay is actually ancient. Like I said, it's been going on for centuries, probably even more than 2,000 years if you really look at it, because even the Greeks and the Romans were feeding their horses and their cattle and their sheep trees. But as a practice, particularly in the United States, particularly here in this modern 21st century that we're in, it's definitely fallen out of favor. And on the surface, you might be wondering why. I mean, like I said, trees are quite literally everywhere. We've got trees everywhere. And meanwhile, I still spend money to buy hay and bring it to my animals and feed them in the winter months. Typically when folks are talking about feeding tree hay, they're talking about coppicing or pollarding a tree. Coppicing is when you cut the top off of a tree and you leave the remaining parts of the tree to regrow and re-sprout new branches in future years. And that pollarding is when you're taking that tree top and you're giving it to the animal as feed. And to provide that animal with feed, it really doesn't take much, particularly from a tools perspective. I mean, you think about making regular grass hay and to try to do it at scale, you need a tractor, you need a mower attachment, you probably need a tether, and you probably need a baler. Yes, you could probably also do it with a scythe and a lot of elbow grease, but realistically speaking, it's very difficult to get enough hay to feed my cattle over the winter by doing something like that. But now if I'm thinking about doing something like making tree hay, I don't know, there's maybe some possibilities of that being a better option and requiring less infrastructure investment. I mean, to make tree hay, it's pretty straightforward. What you're gonna need is either a chainsaw or some sort of hacksaw or maybe some loppers, some eye protection, some gloves, and then maybe some sort of wagon to help carry the trees out from wherever you're cutting them, as well as a dry place to hang your tree branches for drying if you wanna store them for long-term use. So just from an equipment perspective, that doesn't seem too bad at all. And that's something that either people have directly on hand or it's gonna be easily accessible to them. And then the types of trees that you can use to make tree hay are, are pretty broad and pretty diverse and also pretty darn accessible. I mean, for example, here at our farm, we grow mulberry trees and mulberry trees are arguably one of the best forms of tree hay you could give to cattle. Other tree species that you can use include oak trees, maple trees, poplar trees, willow trees, elm trees, sycamore trees, ash trees, hazel trees, shrimp kebabs, pepper shrimp, shrimp soup, shrimp stew, shrimp salad. And if you proceed with caution, you can even feed your cattle black locust branches. There's a lot of debate about feeding ruminants black locust. Yes, it can most definitely be toxic, but also in small doses, it's often seen as medicinal for the animal. So if you're looking at like say, Vermont's Department of Agriculture guidelines, for example, they might tell you not to feed it, but I know a lot of farmers who have been feeding their cattle black locust branches for years and it's been totally fine. You know, my experience with cattle and having toxic plants has been they might eat little bits of it, but they don't seem to want to eat so much that they're going to get themselves sick because they have a lot of other options. And it seems like they often want to just sample and browse. So for example, you can see this milkweed here, which is also toxic, has some leaves missing, but my two heifers who've been in this space aren't chowing down on the milkweed nearly as much as they're chowing down on the grasses. Isn't that right, Abby? Now sheep and goats could be a totally different situation, but I've never really raised sheep or goats, so I'm not the guy you should be listening to on that front. I'm probably not even the guy you should be listening to when it comes to cattle or pretty much anything else when it comes to farming. So definitely proceed with caution and consult your usual provider of veterinary advice. Belinda Carlisle, don't try to give Abby the business. She's just doing her thing. I will say though, I just want to give a very strong word of caution around cherry trees, yew trees, hemlock trees, oleander, rhododendron, boxwood. Whereas you can dabble with black locust, I would not mess at all with tree species like that when it comes to my girls. Hey, 
Belinda, I know you want fresh grass. I'm gonna get you in a second. I'm just trying to talk to the people. She has become quite the bossy heifer. I gotta keep doing some more work with her over the winter. Now, if you actually look right here, you can see some interesting things happening with trees in general. So this is a black locust tree that had some seeds probably spread from that black locust tree. And we got actually another one right here, another little one right here. And I'm about to run the girls in through here. And I'm not worried about them eating it because as a percentage of their overall body weight, this is not extreme at all. And I'm not too concerned about them getting sick from just eating a little bit of black locust leaf. And my personal folksy medicine guess is that there's probably some value in them eating just a wee bit of black locust. But as a fair warning, you have to be careful when it comes to having your cattle out with your trees. When I had the full herd out in this pasture last year, some of the larger cows actually broke loose and just absolutely decimated this black locust tree. And I'm actually gonna try to save it this fall, but I don't know, it's not looking too good. Particularly when you have cattle, they love to rub up against and destroy trees. And so if you ever wanna try to do grazing in between trees, particularly young trees like I do here on my farm, you've got to be exceptionally careful about that one. <laughs> Come on, Abby. You wanna go say hi to Rosie and her babies? Hey, family. How's it going? Yeah, Rosie and her crew continue to grow really well and seem very happy and healthy inside the dog barn here. I will probably move them in with the rest of the weird chickens in about a week or two so that they can rejoin the flock for winter. What do you think about that plan, Abby? You're being very well behaved, Abby. That's, that's exactly what I like to see from you. Yeah, I'll pet you in a second, but I'm super proud that you're watching Rosie and you're being very well behaved. Let's check in with Molly Murder Mittens. Step aside, Pablo Barncat. Well, meow there, folks. This is Molly Murder Mittens, 2022 Barncat of the Year. I've just paused my usual schedule of napping and mouse chasing to talk to you about a terrific book. The book's called Toby Dog of Goldshaw Farm, and it's penned by my two-legged farm companion, who you might know is a published author. You know? Now, I've got to admit, it's a little biased in favor of dogs, which normally would be a cardinal sin in my book, no pun intended. But it's such a tail-wagging hay bale of a story that even a discerning cat like me couldn't resist. And the plot twist ending is a bit hair-raising. Let me tell you, the hand-drawn illustrations in both the print and digital versions are as pretty as a patch of catnip in the morning sun. If you're more of an audiobook kind of critter, let me tell you, listening to this book is like being in a movie. The characters practically jump out of the speakers and come to life. So, don't waste any more time, humans. Pick up a copy of Toby Dog of Goldshaw Farm today and enjoy it as much as I enjoy a nice belly rub. Now back to the show. Rush delivery available. Call and order right now. So as I came up here to move the herd, I actually stopped and I grabbed some ash branches to do a little demonstration for you guys. And as you can tell, they're already happily following me. Hey, Macho Man. All right, here. You guys can have this. Macho Man, you want to take a bite? There you go. Joey Ramon, you want to try some? Yeah, okay, there you go. And the Green Gables, you want to taste? Oops. Macho Man's just gonna follow me wherever I go. <laughs> the boys are fighting over the tree hay. Hey baby Beatrix, you wanna give your first try of an ash branch? No, maybe not, maybe your mom does. Wow, Amanda, you're turning it away too, huh? Oh, no, she just didn't wanna take it from me. You can see she's munching away at it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. My cattle love these tree branches and they will snack on them any chance that they get. Anytime that they're in this pasture, when they're around tree branches, they will definitely chow down on the leaves right down to the stem now an important thing to note too though is when you harvest your tree fodder or tree hay you've got to be very thoughtful about the time of year as well you know as we're getting into the fall and the leaves are starting to turn and the deciduous trees are starting to go dormant because of that shift the tree leaves are going to start to become less and less nutritious as a lot of the sugars and other nutrients in the tree leaves get sucked back into the tree and go down into the root system as the trees get ready for our long cold winter and so for the folks who are out there seeing this 
video and wondering if they can just simply go out there and rake up some leaves and feed them to their cattle or sheep. The answer is not really because there's not enough nutrition in those leaves to really help your animals survive and thrive. Now you guys might be seeing all this and start to wonder if I'm gonna feed my cattle tree hay this winter and if I'm putting up some of the treetops that we have scattered around the farm as a way to feed my animals as well as save on my feed bill. And the answer to that question is no, I don't plan to do that. And let me try to explain why. Hey, Kels, come on, Kels, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on. Hey, Kels, come on, fresh grass. Hey, Kels, come on, let's go. So the dilemma I see as it relates to tree hay or tree fodder as a way to feed my cattle is the fact that it's just not a very efficient way to go about it. And at least for my situation in my context, it'll actually cost me more money to try to feed my cattle off of trees versus just going with traditional hay. Gathering tree branches and drying tree branches in order to feed your animals is a very time and labor intensive activity. To feed my herd over the course of our Vermont winter, it would take me a whole heck of a lot of time to gather enough tree branches to feed my herd over the winter, or even just to gather enough tree branches for it to make it difference and then I would have to use the entire upper level of my barn to store it all and then it would take time to feed it and so in my eyes it's just not all that efficient and it would not save any money whatsoever actually as I was getting ready for this video I started to do some rough math just as a way to say how much tree hay would I need to feed my herd for a Scottish Highland cow like a mature Scottish Highland cow it needs about 2 to 2.5 percent of its body weight in feed on a given day so that amounts to roughly 30 pounds of hay or feed per day I'm gonna be over overwintering nearly a dozen animals this year and even though they're not all mature using 30 pounds is just a good planning measure that gives me just a little bit of extra in case things go wrong so I'm gonna call it say 300 pounds a day just to make the math continue to be very very easy so 300 pounds times I don't know let's see we'll call it 180 days a hay feeding. That's roughly 27 tons of matter that I'm going to need to feed my cattle this winter. Now I already have the hay ordered for my farm and so I'm all set and that actually is pretty much exactly where I ended up when I did my other planning calculation this summer. And that's using hay which is a known quantity and I know how much they would consume. I don't even know the nutritional values and I'm sure there's a lot of variability you know really depending on the type of tree as well as really thinking about the time of year that that tree hay was harvested. And so no shade intended to anybody out there talking about tree hay and promoting tree hay as a way to save money. Yes, I just accidentally made the dumbest pun ever. For other people and other types of context, that might actually be the perfect way to do it, but I just don't think it makes sense for me and my farm. All of those hours I would have spent harvesting tree hay would prevent me from doing other improvement projects around the farm this summer, and so I'm very happy with where I ended up, and I would not have wanted to spend a couple hours a day harvesting tree hay. It just doesn't seem all that efficient. In fact, that's why I don't even harvest hay around the farm in general. That harvesting of hay takes a lot of time. It requires thousands of dollars of equipment. Equipment. And when I pull the hay off of my field, I'm also pulling off the nutrition from my field and I got to figure out a way to give back to the farm and make sure that I'm continuing to build and improve my soil. And while it's pretty easy to spray manure on a pasture, it's much harder to get that organic material that you lose when you pull hay off of a field. Meanwhile, as I look at the context of where my farm is and the fact that there are a lot of pastures out here that do get hayed regularly, and even though prices have gone up because it's been a horrible year for hay in Northern Vermont, it's still a relatively cheap commodity, and so I'd much rather save that capital cost of buying you know, a hay mower and a tedder and a baler and a bale wrapper and finding a way to store all this stuff. Like all of that requires money and time. And I think it's just much more efficient to pay a neighbor, buy bales from them, load them up later in September, and then be ready to go throughout the entire winter. In my opinion, that just seems like a much more efficient and effective way to get the best for my farm. So there you have it. I will not be doing tree hay, but I will be admiring just the view and how everything looks right now. I mean, we got the sun actually really coming up now because it's, I don't know, what is it, almost nine o'clock in the morning. And all of the mist is just starting to burn off. And it all just has me feeling really grateful and lucky to be living here on this farm, having this lifestyle and being able to do what I do. And hopefully you found this useful. And maybe you watch one of these videos over here.